Today we're talking about why the INFJ lives in the future and how to use this to our advantage. As INFJs, we've experienced this more than once. We have seen some trend, we've gotten excited about some trend in any kind of area that is interesting to you. We lived it out and years later, you see people catching up to that trend. So this doesn't have to be something like fashion or architecture, it can be a sense of how you see the world. Everything that we do, we sort of seem 10 steps ahead of everybody else. That is not something that we have to be proud of as in we're better than others. We have our downsides. We have things that we completely neglect out of our sphere. But this is one of the things that we're really good at. This is where our superpower lays. The question is, what do we do with that information? Because most of the time, it's just something we notice. Oh, I did this a couple of years ago, or that's how I saw the world a couple of years ago. And now everybody seems to see it the same way. But still, I didn't take advantage of it. I didn't use this to make something better. I didn't really use it to guide somebody or to get excited about life or to use that knowledge to anything fruitful. It was like I had this idea in my mind, but that's where it stayed. And so today I really want to talk to you about what are we going to do with that knowledge? What are we going to do with the fact that we know the future to some extent in the areas that interest us? All of those thoughts of, oh, I knew this was going to happen years ago. So what are we going to do today, knowing that some of the things that go through our mind that we're not even, you know, classifying, that we're not actively thinking about, but we know them, we live them, we experience them, that they're going to come true for a lot more people sooner than later. Before we get started and dive deeper into that topic, I want to remind you, if you haven't done this so far, to get the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life Formula. So it's this formula that I have developed and tested out with so many INFJs over the last 10 years. And it's really about getting yourself from a place of disconnection and feeling like life is happening outside of you to tapping into a life that starts with you, where you're in control, where you're creating amazing results for yourself and you know that you're tapping into your potential. If you want to go deeper into this topic, so the poster is just an overview. If you really want to get all the details, then get the INFJ Epic Life Audio Guide. So this is a do-it-yourself guide that you can use at home. You can listen to it whenever it makes sense to you and take the steps in the pace that works for you. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. The first reason why the INFJ lives in the future is because it's our first function and that's as easy as we can make it. We are intuitive introverts. And on top of that, we connect this with how humans experience life. So very often the things that we have some foresight about are all about trends in what people like, what people experience, people's fears, people's way of seeing the world. And we can live in our future and experience something because of the fact that not only do we, you know, absorb all of that emotion, but we have already trained our muscle of seeing how that thing is going to develop. We are going through life with this superpower all day long, every day long. You get to a genius level at some point. It's inevitable. You know how in order to become a virtuoso at something, I think you need like 10,000 hours. Guess what? We've done more than 10,000 hours on our introverted intuition. Not always in the healthiest ways. We may have not challenged ourselves enough, but there's a lot of skill in that area. And so automatically, when you absorb something, your first thought is, how is this developing? And this happens on autopilot. You're not even thinking about it. But the reason why you experience this in this moment and you start living it out is because internally, you start feeling that emotion right away. We don't get the emotional feedback of what is going on right now. We are not picking something up and then it's like, oh, this is so amazing. This gets me excited. The thing that gets us excited is we absorb that thing. We, you know, spin it around in our mind. We see what the potential for this is. We see in what direction it's headed. And then the end result, that is what gives us the emotional response. That is what gets us excited. And so we have to be aware that this is something that we do intrinsically because it excites us. And if it's something that we do intrinsically without even thinking about it, 
we have to use this. We have to use this to make the world better. We have to use it to make ourselves better in the process. Like we have to really make the most out of it. And I'm going to tell you why. Not because you need to, not because you're going to be a better person because of it, but because there's such a connection between tapping into your potential and the way you love yourself. If you are not tapping into your potential because you're afraid of, you know, the repercussions of how people are going to look at you weird and say, oh, like, what are you doing? I don't understand you or whatever it may be. We're keeping ourselves small. We have potential. And so we first have to understand that we live in the future and that people are not going to get it because what we're experiencing now, the emotions that we feel, the vision that we see, that is not what is happening right now. It's not. And so people will automatically not see it. They might see it in a couple of years, but they will only see it if you start making it a reality today. While nobody understands this, while nobody knows why you're doing this, they're like, you know, baffled and, you know, maybe triggered, maybe they think you're just completely weird, but those years will pass. And then they will see that you are right about it. They will understand you better. But this process of people understanding you, people, you know, seeing the worth in what you've created will only happen as a byproduct of you cherishing and loving yourself. Because if you start believing in yourself, if you start saying, I think I have this great idea, I have this vision, and I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to bet on how I see the world. I know it's not going to be perfect. I know that I will never have a full picture but that's the best way I can do it right now. And I'm going to anchor it in, into reality because then I can start creating the world. I'm not a bystander and seeing how trends are happening and going and I would have been able to predict it in some way. Let me be somebody who actually creates more of that, who can put their own spin onto it, who can make it better. But again, in order to do that, we have to choose ourselves first and we have to choose ourselves at the expense of people not understanding us because they won't. We are not living on the same timeline as they are. And that's okay. If you choose yourself, reality will catch up to you, but it won't be able to do that if you don't set your anchor into it. The second reason why we INFJs live in the future is because we love personal growth. We love growth in general. Growth is all about creating something out of nothing. And it's all about the potential of something positive. We are not looking into scenarios and thinking about, oh, this is how bad it could turn. We're thinking about what is the potential? How can the abundance of this person, of this circumstance, of this movement be even more magnificent? This is abundance thinking. And we very often see this abundance for other people, for other circumstances, for everything that is in us, as if we're independent of that. But we're not. We are the ones who are creating this abundance. So of course, we have to use this abundance to create ourselves in the process. We have to create a life where we are part of it, where we're not just observers. And of course, this requires courage because tapping into your potential, taking steps forward is not only difficult, but you know, you have to pay a high price for it. But when you get to a place where you understand whatever I've been doing so far, it just isn't enough for me. Like I want to experience life on a deeper level. I want to feel alive. I want to get excited. I want to feel like this is something where I know at the core of my being, that I'm tapping into my potential. I'm creating my INFJ epic life. And no matter whoever comes across me, they can never convince me that I'm not doing it because I know deep down that I am. That's what we want to get to. And so, you know, if you are constantly and intrinsically focusing on abundance and on growth, putting something into the world can never be a bad thing because your intention is good. You want growth out of it. You're not doing this in order to inflict pain on others. You're not doing this because you cannot handle your own emotions. There will be a weight of you that is going to be put on the world. You're going to burden the world with your worldview. We're so afraid of that so often, not only because we think like it's too much for people to carry, but it's like, I'm not good enough to put that burden onto others. I have to pull myself back. But you being a burden 
is weight. It's not something that is a bad thing. It's an anchoring quality. Think of it like this. Don't think that you're squishing other people. Think of it as something that grounds people, that shows them another perspective, that transforms them. Because you being you can never be a bad thing, even if it hurts people. Because if you being yourself hurts people, then it's because they are ready to be triggered and get to the next level of who they are. You being yourself can never be a wrong thing. And that's what we have to start with. The third reason why the INFJ lives in the future and loves this entire process is because it's a great strategy of life. If we understand that this is our superpower and that we can use it for good, we're set for life because then we won't feel bad for using it. So often it feels like I have all these foresights and other people don't, so therefore I'm not allowed to act on it because then I would be manipulating other people or I would have an advantage over other people. You don't. Every single person has a superpower within them. And if they tap into this, if they rely on this, then everybody would have equal opportunities. So you tapping into your superpower is not you taking something away from others. It's an inspiration for others to choose themselves as well. So don't ever feel like you're taking something away from others, from shining bright. And if this is something that you feel inside, and I know I felt it so many times, then really get to a place where you know it's my birthright. It's a necessary step for me to be the best version of myself. And the best version is not just good for yourself, it's good for the people around you. So yes, you might not be a crutch anymore for some people. You might not be enabling people anymore. You might not make them feel good about who they are in the moment. But what you are is being a person who inspires them to create a version of themselves that they truly like, where they don't need you as a crutch, but you are their inspiration so they find their true essence themselves. You can act towards them in a way of, I don't think you can do it, so let me be the one who saves you. Or you can act in a way of, I'm tapping into my superpower, I'm using this knowledge of the future and how things might develop to my advantage because this is who I am. And this is my birthright and I'm doing this because I'm part of humanity and who I am is a gift to the world like every single other person is. And the only thing that you're doing is the best you can. You don't need for others to love you because they need you. We have to step away from this thing of they need me. I act in a way that keeps them alive and if I'm gone, they're going to be devastated. Let them make that choice for themselves. Choose you, tap into what you already know and put it into action. Use the knowledge that you have today in order to create something. Because guess what? Some of the things that you have in your mind might never really happen because that energy of yours hasn't been put into the world. Maybe it's your insight that is necessary as a component to move humanity, to move society, to move your friendship group, your family, whoever you come into contact with into a better direction. But they will never experience this if you don't put your true energy out there independent of who they are. Because only then the choice is on them to decide, do I want to get inspired by this? Or do I want to be repelled by this? Because this is something I cannot handle right now or maybe ever. But that's their choice to make, not yours. The fourth reason why INFJs live in the future is because it's a great way of self-defense. So this isn't something that we do because we want to be manipulative, but every single one of us needs to make sure that we're safe. Every single person creates the safe space around them and they do it with the power that they have. Our main power is foresight. Because of foresight, we know how things are going to develop in many cases. We make mistakes, of course we make mistakes here and there, and we actually learn from that the most. Because then we have new conclusions that we might have not had before. But once we have this conclusion, it's one more thing that keeps us safe. Every single person wants to feel safe, wants to feel at peace, wants to feel like we're one with the universe and through that create the way we're supposed to create. So using your foresight as something that's going to protect you is not a bad thing. It's something that you're equipped with. 
So don't make it a bad thing. It's actually the thing that allows you to be kind. It's the thing that allows you to be generous. It's the thing that allows you to be giving and of service and have all of the energy of you actualized because you know how things are probably going to develop and it's a calculated risk to bet on yourself, to be more open, to be more giving, to be more conscientious. That is a choice we make. And we can make that choice and we can show up as the version of ourselves that we want to be because we have the foresight and we know that if we stay in that situation, things are probably not going to move into a good place. But if I continue this way and my foresight tells me that I'm going to stay safe here, then I'm going to be on the right path and I can be most of who I am. We need that safe space in order to really bring everything that we are to the world. So see it as a great side effect to your superpower. Don't ever feel ashamed of it and know that if you're using it with integrity, if there's a reason for keeping you safe because once you're safe, you can be a better person, then you will never question it anymore. You will not see it as something that you should be embarrassed about because you have more power in this than others. Every single person has power in who they are. So allow yourself to tap into the power that is already within you. And the fifth reason why we INFJs live in the future is because our first function is our hero function. So I don't really remember how the system is called that, you know, gives this attribute to our first function, but it makes total sense. Our first function is our hero function. Our second function is our parenting function, meaning our second function is something that we do without needing anything in return. We just want to give. But our first function is our hero function. This is where we feel like we have the superpower. We are the hero of our own story. You're allowed to feel like the hero of your own story. The challenge here is that our first function is not visible to most people. That hero function is something that we have to tap into because we know we're making the most of what we can right now with what we have. That is the moment you tap into your own hero. Nobody's going to see it. Nobody is going to give you the feedback of, oh, you're such a great hero or not. Or even if they did, it won't matter to you because you are the only one who knows what your potential are and who knows if you're tapping into it. So what do we do with all this information? Well, the main thing is expect more from yourself. If you have a vision for something, make it a reality. Start putting that seed into the real reality. How is your life right now? What can you make better out of where you're currently at? And lean into your visions. Alter reality through your filter. Do it in the way you can. And you'll see how you will know the instant you start that you're living your INFJ epic life and that you'll never back off again. Because once you start leaning into it, you know that you finally found what you've been looking for your entire life and you didn't find it in anybody else. You found it in trusting that although you're not perfect, although you don't know all the answers, you're willing to go into the ring in sharing who you are with the world. And you're the only one who decides in what capacity you wanna do that. But it's a capacity in which you stay safe, in which you allow yourself to use all of your gifts, in which you allow reality and people to be confronted with who you are. We're so afraid of being who we are because of the reaction we're going to get. But that reaction is a necessary component. The more you choose yourself, the more you build on something, the more you start creating that life that is going on in your mind as a first step, the less you're going to feel all of those confrontations because your life is going to move away from the people who cannot handle who you are and will attract the people who want to be inspired by you. The pain that you're afraid of that is happening internally in the first place will be the most when you start. It won't stay this hard, but you have to go through it to get to the next level. So again, if you want an overview of how to make this process happen, 
get the free poster on the INFJ Epic Life Formula. And if you want to deep dive into it and really start taking action, I can only highly recommend getting the INFJ Epic Life Audio Guide. Everything you need to know, you can find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in line with today's topic, then check out the video you see on the screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.